We at my mom's crib, y'all. So this is where I listen to my very first album ever. If y'all find out where she live and y'all trying to show up here, I'm breaking both ankles at the same time. I'm grabbing your legs and, and hyper extending them mugs. I do remember that Make a Wish was one of the, the early NCT songs that we heard. Um, just off the top of my memory without pulling the video up, it was one where I was very captivated by the outfits that they had in the video. I really liked the song as well. Um, to open up the album with this is kind of like making a statement. All right, I don't think I watched this like since the we did the reaction. Like these were one of our first reactions, man. This was early in CT. We couldn't recognize any members or anything was going on. We were just in awe, like they're making fire music and we didn't know anything about this, man. So it's interesting to see you, man, again. It takes me back to the feelings of when I was a child and I actually had a childlike mindset where I would wish that certain things would happen. And um, I had a lot of birthdays in this house and it's real nostalgic listening to this album at my mother's house where I grew up. Um, this song is, I mean, it's a bop, honestly. This is so early on. Tay Young on the first verse, snapped. Hey, I like the switch ups. Like, that's one thing that caught me about NCT is like, it's not a continuous beat all the time. Like, there's always a switch up. This spot specifically is where I fell in love with music, where someone, I won't name any names, was allegedly illegally downloading uh, music off LimeWire.com. Won't name any names, but somebody was right here. <laughs> That's because there's so many weapons at their disposal. Like, you, can, you got rappers, you got singers, dancers. It just all just meshes perfectly together. So that's a that's that's a perfect track to start the album off. It's fun, it's exciting. I like it. Before reacting, um, we had a we had a, a pretty solid business plan. It was originally four of us. Our plan was completely different from <laughs> what we're doing now. Scrambling from a standpoint of going from a four-man team to a two-man team and changing the business plan constantly to uh, adapt and change with what was going on with COVID-19. Man, opening this studio was a huge step for me, even though it doesn't sound that much of a big deal. I was a freelance videographer for about eight years since I graduated college in 2013. And so we were shooting commercials for small businesses. We were literally working and editing all day, day in and day out, and just felt like we just weren't getting any traction. And one day I just sat down and I was like, okay, we got some new podcast equipment because we were gonna start doing podcasts in here. I said, what better way to test it out than to do a reaction video? What are you expecting? Um, honestly, I have no idea. I'm, I'm thinking something upbeat. I've had nothing but K-pop in my head since two days ago when we recorded that first one. I was scared, but hey, let's get to it. We're gonna start. Oh, those fists in the back. Oh, Are those fists in the back, bro. Man, that's this, why this is my favorite, bro. And we developed a new appreciation for them because they're doing it in English too. I just remember hearing this song for the first time and it was like new and fresh because K-pop as a whole was new and fresh for us. And it gave me like a Run DMC type feel like uh, combining rock and hip hop. Uh, they were the first to do that historically. And just to see it travel all the way across the world to South Korea in 2020, is just amazing to see. I remember Misfit, um had a lot of energy. It actually wasn't typically my style. Now that I'm deep into K-pop, I kind of understand that, you know, it's more than just one particular genre, like K-pop in its whole, like you'll hear a lot of rap, R&B, rock kind of mixed in together. But I do remember like that this one for some odd reason had a lot more views than some of the other videos. I just remember like, I wasn't looking at the numbers early on, 
But once we got to about 30 videos in, I started to scroll back and look at the analytics and I'm like, Misfit is doing numbers. Like, I didn't even think that that song was, was my favorite. Looking back at our review, like, we had no clue who these people were. And it's funny to see, um, what, like two months later, we can name each member. Uh, what really changed my mind about Misfit was when I watched the uncut and I got to see them in the studio. That's actually something that I did on my own because Fredo was out doing a shot. And I had so much more appreciation for the song and the video just because I got to see the raw takes and I got to see the guys in the studio. And personally, that's my favorite thing to watch other than the complete project. I feel like I've been a misfit. Like historically in my whole life, I've always been like a jock athlete, but a nerd at the same time. So everybody over here is thinking I'm cool. And then I got people over here thinking I'm cool, but really I'm just somewhere in the middle. And I always didn't really resonate with either side the most. Probably more the jock side because that's who I've been around. But uh, overall, man, the feel of the album is just fun so far. And uh, this is definitely a unique track. I haven't heard anybody else in K-pop do any of this style myself. So uh, yeah, I love it, man. Looking back, like this video, I didn't even notice has 116,000 views on YouTube. And that's just crazy to see. That's my, that's my second favorite part. So when I listen to an album, there's a few things that I'm gauging. It's, it's the overall energy and it's the flow in between the tracks. So this one's going to be a little bit different since we reacted to some of these songs previously. But so far, coming from Birthday Song to um, Misfit to Volcano, it's been very high energy for me. Tay Young starting us off right again, man. The production is crazy on this album, man. Between him, Jung Woo, and Jae Hyun, got some vocal killers in the group. The switch ups, the flow of the songs, and the arsenal of artists that they have. I'm gonna say an arsenal because they're all hazardous in a good way. This is fire. You hear them just in the back of my chest? Wow. Um, if I had no idea what I was listening to, nothing about this artist, like it would already put me in a preset mode of like this entire album is gonna slap. And it is so far. Um, Misfit probably has the most energy. So if we say that's a 10 out of 10, I would put Volcano maybe at like a 7.5 or an 8, as well as Birthday Song maybe being around a 7.5 or an 8. So what's dope is like YouTubers are making color coded lyrics to where it shows each member who's singing at what part. That's huge for us because now that we can recognize the faces, like this helps us hone in on what each person's voice sounds like. Overall, I feel like we got NCT 127 down packed, but that's just a subunit of the whole NCTU, the piano. I remember uh, Tae Young's flow in this one because it was kind of different. It was like, because he's not speaking English, so it's, this is a cadence I've never heard before. Dude, I'm going to, it's going to, these B-sides are like a, like a drug, bro. Yeah. It's going to be hard to pull me off of them because I'm willing to sacrifice a music video to listen to just the B-sides, bro. Like yeah, they just, what, what am I trying to say? They just hitting different. They're more of our style, bro. Yeah, man. Like, I can hear you making a track like this. There we go. Lightbulb uh, definitely shifted the mood for me on the album, especially hearing the songs in a row. And these are all songs that I've still heard before, but in comparison to the journey, it's not necessarily the order in which I heard them in the journey. Um, Lightbulb is one of those more serious songs for me. I love the instrumental. I actually had somebody send me the instrumental and they were like, I listened to your other music and I just wish that you would just write something to that. I'm still gonna get around to that. But I feel like the lyrics and the meaning of Lightbulb were so deep. I remember some of the words that Tae Young said and it was describing a relationship being on and off and on and off. And when we did the color coded lyrics of this, I remember I was visually just picturing like someone cutting a light bulb on and off and on and off. Um, I really like Tae Young's part in this. Do Young was literally choosing me yet again on the hook, like, so I switch off. 
Like this, this is a beautiful song. And like I said, you're coming from, you know, misfit and more of the high energy songs to this. And it kind of just makes you relax a little bit. This reminds me of Jay Z song cry. Like it's giving me that same vibe. And then Do Young's voice is always smooth and gives it a whole different, he can add a whole different vibe to a song, but with his voice alone. So right now we are in Middletown High School and I haven't been in here since high school. I'm not even joking. They completely remodeled this whole thing. And this is crazy, dog. Like it's, it's actually like fire in here now. It's a lot of history. Uh, being from Middletown. That's actually my dad's cousin, Chris Carter, NFL football player for the Minnesota Vikings, uh, Hall of Famer, both here in Middletown and in the uh, Football Hall of Fame. And uh, it's just really special being back here, man. So this year I'll be inducted to the Middletown Hall of Fame for being a stellar athlete. I did my thing in track. I did my thing in football. Um, I think I'm the all-time leading tackler in, in, in Middletown history uh, for football. And then um, I hold the record for the 400 meter dash as well as the 4x400 meter dash and uh, the sprint medley as well. So Dancing in the Rain was the first real vibe change in the album. It kind of slowed things down, it has a very jazzy beat. It gave me a real nostalgic feeling. And we didn't even plan us to shoot this particular song at the high school. We're kind of just riding around showing you where we're from and giving you a little bit of history, you know, just about us and just, you know, where we're from. But uh, doing this song specifically at the high school, um, there's a lot of memories here. And I don't know the lyrics of the song because we just listened to it and we haven't reacted to this one, but it was giving me a very nostalgic feel. Um, had a lot of memories, a lot of flashbacks sitting in there listening to this song in the album. Um, so, so far at this point in the album, there's been a shifting of, you know, a lot of high energy tracks and now it's kind of smooth and changing the energy and the overall vibe so far. Dope track, by the way, too. Okay, so it was just an instrumental and it literally went from like an old school vibe to like some new school dubstep vibe. So that's the interlude, past to present. And where we at right now was Douglas Park in Middletown. Like this is where I used to spend countless hours as a kid, just hooping, playing basketball. I used to ask my mama for a dollar every single day so I could run down here to the swimming pool. It's not here anymore. Imagine me like five, six years old, no supervision, just running around this neighborhood. Deja vu. Ironically, I'm having deja vu right now, man. I spent a lot of time right here in the spot, actually in the grass here. I grew up on 16th in Minnesota, and I used to always see this guy out here named Frosty. He used to sell burnt CDs. And I kid you not, I used to take my lunch money, come out here and buy CDs for my CD player, because that was pregame music when I was playing basketball in like middle school and high school. Uh, I always look for new music, and it's crazy that I'm 30 years old now, and I'm still looking for new music and I'm finding it. Yeah, this is just some way different. This is way different than all of the tracks. Like, <laughs> this is definitely back up to party vibes where we started the album at. Hey Chan starting a verse. <laughs> LC's back here doing crazy stuff. Dun 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 dun. dun. This is like a party dubstep R&B hip hop fusion combined like this is something different and I feel like that's perfect for this placement in the album as well heavily requested in the comments in Where our premiere man we were yeah. watching stuff back and I'm like wavy nectar and I put this little emoji like this they were like yes bro we follow the vibes yeah, give me that. I've got to stand off the instrumental alone oh snap okay Woo! let's do it Yo, wavy off the instrumental. That 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 got me, bro. Do, 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 do. I hope That's you guys fire. please invest in some good headphones.
Yeah, watch these premieres with headphones in, please, oh. so you can get the full effect of the song. The instrumental on Nectar is probably one of my favorites so far. It's that sound in the background that Give me that, give me that, give me that. Ah, bringing me back into the bouncy mode on the album. Giving me some perspective of the group members that I'm not too familiar with, like Yang Yang and, and Hendry, and I can't even pronounce his name, Zhao Jun. This is kind of highlighting them for me. This one is the one that gets stuck in my head the most on the album so far, I don't know why. I think it's the hook right here that, give me that nectar, uh, give me that, give me that, give me that. Ah. Yeah. From a lyric standpoint, it's, it's, it's kind of poetic. Um, this is one that we've reacted to before doing the full album review, and it's still one of my favorites. Like I said earlier, it's just the instrumental, it's the overall presence of the song. Um, the hook is very catchy, the beat is very catchy, and the lyrics are, po are poetic, like dancing in the moonlight, alone, till the end of time. It's, it's, it's kind of like a poem but I don't think that it gives me poetic vibes. It gives me dancey, bouncy vibes. It's, it's one of the more catchy ones on the album, um, especially now that we're playing the album all the way through and kind of giving our feedback. This is the one that is still stuck in my head the most. Um, right now, I'm gonna say it's one of my favorites on the album. Top three easily on the album. Not overall, but on the album. Music, dance. Hands in the air. Open it with Jay Hume. This is different too. Taeyong. So we got back to back whole units. So we had NCT Dream, now we got 127. It's like a, I would say it's like a fashion Hip hop song, like I like the energy. This is this whole album. I would say is just like fun halfway through it. RM is not having it. Mr. Rap Monster himself is the only one up. He's chilling, but the only one up here biting the bags. Look, he is like, I know you are not about to put them in here. He's got beef. He's got beef, bro. I don't know what's going on. Come on, hey Chan. Hang in there, brother. Don't chill at the bottom, bro. You're making me nervous. So you guys are getting the, the visual perspective of this album review, but we did actually just sit and listen to it in different scenarios through a speaker and just through the phone um, or the actual physical album in the car. The color-coded lyrics really help us because we're still learning a lot of these group members whether that be learning their names, how to pronounce their names, uh, learning what they look like, and most importantly, being able to match what they look like and how they sound. Because we do a lot of lives in our Patreon, we do a lot of different performance videos, and sometimes they'll, just them simply changing the color of their hair or their outfit, will kind of question which group member it is sometimes, especially since we're not focusing in on one group right now, we're kind of just going with the flow of things dependent upon you guys' Discord requests. So the color-coded lyrics help us recognize who's singing and when. My favorite thing about the color-coded lyrics are when more than one pe uh, person is highlighted, and then I know that it's both Johnny and Lucas, or you know, Renjun or um, Tin, or Tail. And I really love the vocal blends because they're taking the teamwork approach with these songs. Um, this song specifically, Faded In My Last Song, kind of gets me back in that chill vibe again. This is definitely one of those thinker songs for me. Um, the first time that I heard it, the beat really reminds me of this song. Uh, what is, I can't think of the name of that song. Oh, I'm gonna, Drowning by uh, A Boogie in the Hoodie. Drowning by A Boogie in the Hoodie. And I just remember as soon as I heard this instrumental, when we first reacted to it, I just kept saying, I'm drowning. I'm drowning because that's what it sounds like. So when it's something that similar to me, I got to kind of like block that from my mind and then focus back in on the song. I really like Johnny in the beginning of this song because the the like the raspy whisper of his voice matches the instrumental really well. And, and the hook is my all time favorite part with 10 on there. 
Hold on. And I need you, you. And hold on, that's not even the hook. I'm sorry. Faded in my last song. That's where Hey Chan shows out. Ooh, Renjun hits that part too. You love this song from home. Na 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 na, na, na. from home. But this is the rearranged version. I don't necessarily know if the song is different. I, I know for a fact the the music video yeah. is different. It's like showing their journey from just starting out to where they are now. Yeah. Because the concept of the song is, you know, they all come from different places, but right. they're starting here now, and this is our home. Early, early on, we came across From Home, and I remember we reviewed it not too long after the song came out. But man, this is a beautiful arrangement. It's only suiting that my guy Hey Chan opens it up, man. Like, I don't play From Home on the regular. I play regular on a regular. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Because mm -hmm. I was on vacation and I played from home. I had woke up in the morning. It was a long day of traveling. I opened the blinds and there it was palm trees, um, a swimming pool, a jacuzzi, mm -hmm. beautiful blue skies. And I played from home and I just felt like it just made me feel at home. I felt centered. I felt relaxed. Mm -hmm. This song always just gets me like in a in, in in an emotion. I would say not a bad emotion, but it just kind of gets me like thinking and reminiscing my myself, you know, about my friends and my upbringing. It's one that I know that my mom would love too. Mm -hmm. The natural scenery is something that really caught me too. Was just being out on the beach and in the woods and things like that. Cornfield shot. The vocal, the vocal blend on this is probably one of the best I've heard in K-pop period for some reason. And I think it's just because I love the song, but that not alone is perfect. It like literally pierces my heart. Like, ugh. Them, them choosing From Home to conclude the album was powerful because it shows, it shows the storyline to me. Like you're going through this album, you got upbeat tracks, you got a little bit of um, more intellectual tracks, and it's almost, it's, it's been a journey. And, and From Home is literally just putting a stamp on how much, it, how much hard work was put into this album. Um, if you specifically wanna dive into like From Home and the meaning From Home, it, it makes it even more special that they ended it with this song because they're literally from home, or away from home, recreating you know a new home with each other and it's just the perfect way to end the album in my opinion it's been a, a a journey from a musical standpoint of a lot of different tempos and types of beats and you got rapping and singing and all different gifts being displayed and but from home was a song where they all were singing you know what i'm saying no one really stands out it's a, it's a teamwork type song the vocal blends are beautiful everything is meshing well and it kind of puts you in your feels, you know? And it, I feel like the only thing that can get me out of it is if I start this album over again. Like it just literally just set the tone for like, this is the end of the album. It's not the end of us, but I don't know. It's good. Uh, I see SM Town on their um, YouTube channel and I, I only can imagine that that's influenced by Motown. Uh, if there's any correlation, please let me know. But that's what I think of because I see multiple groups of straight talent all gelling and meshing together and creating something that can't be replicated. So, like I said, I feel like it started here in America, but Right now, I could say Korea is perfecting the craft because we kind of got a little stagnant here in America and pretty much in mainstream America, anything goes. You know, a lot of, I can hear a lot of African-American influence in the album and somebody like asked us that question, do we care about like cultural appropriation? And 
you know, do you feel like they're stealing an art or whatever? Like, no, I don't look at it, at it like that at all. Um, I adore the fact that they draw inspiration from American culture. Like, that's amazing because we're kind of ignorant here, over here in America, when it comes to other cultures, unless you actively seek out that knowledge or you have friends and family that um, bring that diversity to your family. So I'm always shocked and amazed, man, that they even talk about some of their influences and it's people that I grew up listening to. So music really does make the world go round and it's a, uh, a great way to connect with people. Even if you don't speak the same language, you can catch and feel the same vibe.